It's the first minute and I'm about to kill Exborg. But then two enemies came to help. The enemy Roamer and mid laner. I then proceeded to kill them all 1v3. So how can you achieve the same? Well, I've put together the four essential steps of XP lane early game. And I'm not talking about XP lane basics, but the secrets to actually dominating. Step one, choosing meta. If you truly want to win 1v1 on XP lane, you need to start picking meta if you haven't yet. Don't choose your comfort pick or favorite hero because you stop yourself from actually learning how to play against the others. Expand your hero pool and knowledge around other types of playstyles, and you'll easily figure out each weakness and be able to take advantage of that. After learning other heroes, then you can go back to your main if that's what you wish to do. But the current XP laners I suggest are Yu Jong, Exborg, Terizla, Paquito, Barats, and Masha. They're a mix of both sustain and damage and most likely to win or tie any matchup. However, in the end, it of course depends on the individual player. And you're the individual who's going to get better with the next steps. But before we move on, an important thing to know is that during draft mode, wait until the enemy team has picked their XP laner so you can pick a hero you specifically believe can beat it. But of course, keep in mind that few XP laners can play as other roles as well like Ruby, Barats, and Arlot. So make sure that is indeed the XP laner the enemy team chooses. Step 2. True Itemization At the start of the game, 99% of XP laners already make this one mistake, and that is the very first item you're purchasing. Since you don't rotate and move around the map as level 1, don't buy boots. The best choice is to buy Dagger for plus 15 physical attack and prioritize Fury Hammer. However, if you're a sustained XP laner such as Barats and Tamas, buy the physical defense item or magic defense item for plus 18 physical defense or plus 18 magic defense, which depends on the enemy's type of damage where you prioritize warrior boots or tough boots afterwards. If some of you still believes it's better to get boots, let's test and see the difference with Dagger and without Dagger as Yu Jong. Yu Jong deals 717 damage without Dagger and 760 with Dagger. Now this is only a 43 damage difference, but let's see when I use first skill, third skill, petrify combo and basic attack three times. Without Dagger, he deals 3,263 damage in total, and with Dagger, he deals 3,636 in total. That's a 373 damage difference. And some players might not think it's a lot either, but haven't we all experienced those moments where the enemy killed us with barely any HP left? Step 3. Laning Phase This step contains the secrets that most XP laners don't know about during their 1v1. It requires a lot of time and experience to learn these tips I'm about to tell you from playing, so I've compiled them here. The first tip allows you to get an instant advantage when you trade damage with your enemy. It is simply clearing minions faster than the enemy XP laner so you reach level 2 faster. But be careful trading damage with heroes that can hit minions at the same time hitting you like Yu Jong with his first skill, because if he upgrades his third skill and petrifies you, you'll most likely die or be forced to flicker away. The second tip is when you're level 3 and need that last minion to get level 4, you can time when the minion dies or kill it, then immediately attack the enemy where you upgrade your ultimate. So prepare to attack when you're about to reach level 4. The third tip allows you to decide the outcome of the battle and predict their next move, which you can by analyzing the enemy hero, including their hero skills and battle spell. For example, in this clip I'm against Khalid as Yu Jong. I'm aware that he has a second skill which allows him to heal. Normally, you would wait until he uses his second skill before you use your stun, but you can also kill him during your stun. As I mentioned something similar before, you should try at least every XP laner once to know how they work, but if you don't have all the heroes, you should at least read each XP laner's skills because there could be passives that you might not know. The fourth tip is when you've picked a strong XP laner, you can literally force the enemy to choose between two things by zoning and freezing your minion waves. Either they have to take damage from you, which will make them an easy gank for your team, or they'll lose some of their minions. It's the aggressive playstyle, where you zone them in the middle of the lane, so they have to stay under the turret. However, the downside is that you're away from your turret and close to the enemy side, so any enemy can gank you easier. Not only does enemy losing farm mean you'll have a better advantage in the 1v1, but it means he won't get level 4 the same time as you for turtle spawn. 
But remember when doing this, don't get too distracted and be aware of what happens on the map so you don't get ganked. You can avoid the mistake by remembering that playing XP lane isn't all about winning your 1v1s, it's more about rotating, where you help other lanes when possible, so look for opportunities on the map too. The fifth tip is the other way to zone and freeze your minions, which is the passive playstyle. This is actually a better way to prevent the enemy from getting farmed. The passive playstyle can be done by waiting to clear the last minion so that when the next wave comes, it'll be closer to your side. However, this means the enemy XP laner can take the crab while you're freezing, and you won't be able to rotate and help your team. I suggest only freezing like this if it is to stop the enemy from reaching level 4 before turtle or when the enemy ends up being stronger than you, and so it's better for you to have the minion wave closer towards your side. Otherwise, it's better for you to clear and rotate. The sixth and last tip is about whenever the enemy recalls or goes to farm the green jungle. Before he comes back, you can camp in the bush close to the enemy. It allows you to zone him from getting XP from minions, but if he decides to clear his wave, you can punish him. But again, when doing this, remember to be careful of enemies ganking you because you're far away from your turret. Step 4. Maximizing your advantage. This step is the most important one because it's easy to mess up and lose your entire advantage from being overconfident because you're winning to rotating without clearing minion waves first. So to get the most out of your advantage, here are two important things. The first important thing is once you start winning your lane, it isn't to keep staying on the lane, but to do low cuts or high cuts where you rotate afterwards and help your teammates. Meanwhile, if the enemy XP laner tries to do the same while he's losing against you, go punish him because normally he won't cut your lane, meaning he's actually forced to be stuck on the lane. You should only perform cuts when you're winning or when you're certain that you can. Your main goal in the early game is to keep the enemy XP laner behind and take their turret if possible, to then rotate around the map and assist your teams in objectives and team fights. But never let your turret open for the enemy to push freely, only in some cases you can. For example, when you sacrifice your turret in order to help your team secure the objective, where you take out the other enemies as well. However, that's risky since if the enemy XP laner is aware, he can notify his team that you're missing, allowing the other enemies to just retreat and not go all in for the turtle while he'll take your turret. The second important thing is avoiding the mistakes that'll make you lose your entire advantage. Many XP laners tend to be playing too aggressively and forget to pay attention to the map. This is why I recommend watching my map awareness guide, where I teach you how to make it a habit. Another mistake is when you're winning against the enemy. Many players subconsciously don't play with 100% focus anymore because you have an advantage, meaning you'll usually be able to end, but that's not always the case. Always take the game seriously, since it's not guaranteed that you have won until the enemy base is destroyed. 